Hey guys, today I'll be teaching you the memory verse for the month. It's Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hello everyone! Hey, welcome back to Kidsville. Hey, thanks so much for being out there. We're going to teach you what we've been focusing on for this month of June. And it's our new life app called Faith. Let's look at this faith slide together. It says this. What's faith? Let's look. Faith, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Read it again. Faith, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Okay, so let's talk about this. Faith, things that you can't see but you trust that it's there, right? Let's talk about the wind. Has anybody experienced a storm like yesterday? or earlier this week maybe, it's the wind is something you can't see, but you know it's there. You feel it. You see the effects of it. Have you seen any trees knocked down and things like that? It's because of some of the strongest winds we had. It's the like, same thing with our faith in God. See, we can't see God, but if you take a closer look, you can see the things that God's created. You can even see some of the things that he's done, like how he's worked in people's lives all throughout history and even in our very own. That's what faith is. So we are going to talk a little bit more about that today. And, but you know what? First, stand up with us as we transition into some worship and some music. I want you to get up off your seat wherever you're at. And can we just take a minute, a minute just to kind of refocus ourselves, just refocus on him how he has created us to worship him. And I don't care if you sit quietly in your seat, but I'm going to challenge you to at least stand in respect of the Lord. You don't have to do the motions with me, but please stand up and just give him your all.
Last week we talked about, you know, that horse. Remember the horse? We talked about the horse's blinders, and they were on his head. Man, he couldn't look to the right or left. We get caught up in so many distractions. We've got to focus on him. Change our faith, right? Faith focused on Jesus only, what God has in store for us. Here's the other thing I want you to focus on. What do you believe in? We're going to be talking about that today. That you need to know what you believe in. We talked about this even back in Easter time. But you need to believe that God is who he says he is and who he said he did. What he said he did. God is the Father, but we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. Do you? Do you believe what happened after that? How he rose again? Do you believe that he has given you a new life? Gosh, I hope so. Make this song your prayer today on what you believe and claim it. Can you claim it? Stand up again. Worship him with these words.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. My pal Jerry, who you'll see here in a few minutes, we get to present today's story. So today we are we get to talk about s something really, 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 really important person who actually wrote most of the New Testament in the Bible, right? You might know him by the name of Paul, but he also went by the name of Saul, we're, we're going to call him Saul for today. Ha, huh. I'm Saul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with a famous rabbi, Gamaliel is his name. For Saul, his faith was important. But Jesus was changing the way everyone thought about God. And Saul found himself right in the middle of it. He watched as more and more people started to believe that Jesus really is the Son of God. After studying, Saul became a religious leader, right? Like the other religious leaders of his time, Saul was caught off guard by Jesus and had, who had been crucified, but now his followers were saying he's alive. Right? He has returned to life and that they have actually seen him. It didn't make sense to Saul. He had other religious leaders. He and other religious leaders were upset that the number of Jesus' followers continued to grow. In fact, they did everything that they could to stop this new movement. Right, They even arrested a Jesus follower named Stephen. And on that awful day when Stephen was killed, Saul was there. There we go. Mm -hmm. And a couple more. All right. He held the coats of the people who were throwing the stones at Stephen, right? And as you can see, Saul was someone we call a good guy. He wasn't someone, that, you know, he wasn't someone that we would call a good guy, right? It seemed like Saul and the Jesus followers would never be on the same team, right? Saul became known for hunting down the people who believed in Jesus. It sort of became his personal mission, right? So one day he discovered that some Jewish people in Damascus were following Jesus. <clears throat> So he went to the high priest Caiaphas to see if he could go to Damascus and investigate. Mm. Saul asked Caiaphas for the letters so he could take them to the synagogues in Damascus. The synagogues were basically the churches where the Jewish gathered and talked about and practiced their faith. Saul wanted these letters so that he would be allowed to arrest the believers and bring them back to Jerusalem, right? Caiaphas gave him the letters, and Saul set off with a group of men to arrest any believers they found. After many days on the road, they finally neared Damascus, and suddenly a, white, a light from heaven flashed around Saul, and he fell to the ground. After he fell to the ground... Saul heard a voice. 
Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Whoa. Saul must have, must have been like, uh, did that really happen? Uh, the men traveling with Saul stood there, unable to speak. Saul got up, but he couldn't see. His friends led him by hand to Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street for three whole days. Saul was also blind, and he did not eat or drink. Saul couldn't deny it. He had a direct encounter with Jesus. He had seen for himself that Jesus was very much alive. Could it be that everything Jesus' followers believed was actually true? Was Jesus actually the Son of God? Had Saul been wrong about him this whole time? Saul's life dramatically changed that day. Even though he was now physically blind and was unable to see, but he was able to see in a completely new way because of Jesus, right? Today's bottom line is knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything. Everything that Saul thought he knew about Jesus changed that day, and he would never be the same. Let's pray. Dear God, it's amazing how you completely changed Saul's life. After you met him there on that road, he was never the same. You do the same thing for us. When you put, when we put our faith in you, Lord, you transform us on the inside. You make us want to love others instead of just living for ourselves. You change the way that you see everything. Please. Help us to see the things your way as we live every day. We love you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, what a story. Thanks, Tom, for, for hanging out with us and getting us through that story about an incredible, incredible thing that God did. God kind of works that way. You know, he works in the dramatics. He works behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden he shows up, and he's so big, and, and something great happens, and that's what he did in, in Saul's life, okay? So, you know, we talked a little bit about the bottom line. We're going to look at that bottom line one more time, uh, and it's knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything. If you think about it, God has been helping people in the big story since the very beginning, since creation uh, and all down through from Abraham, God, God has a big story, and he has a big plan. And he had a plan for everybody's life, including a man named Saul. So uh, it's still true today. Even today, God has a plan for you. He has a plan for your parents. He has a plan for your brother and your sister and everybody around you. He may not show up in this big blinding light like he did for Saul, but there are lots of times where he shows us something new about him. Uh, sometimes God can speak to you uh, through experience, you know, something, something like when you go out and, and you're out in the nature, you're out in the woods or at the lake, you know, and, and maybe there's just not a lot of people around. You're out in that beautiful world that God made and, and God kind of speaks to you that. Or maybe, maybe you're, you're like Miss Amy. She always talks about in her van how this song really speaks to her. And how, how, how it's her Jesus jam, and she's in the van, and all of a sudden, God is speaking to her. And God's, God is like that. He's always with you. He's with you in the car. He's with you in the woods. He's with you wherever you go. So let's look for ways that we can keep our focus, uh, and we keep our focus on Jesus, right? We don't take our eyes off Jesus. When you think about Peter and his story, and he was com coming out of the boat that time, he took his eyes off his feet, off his Jesus, and he looked at his feet, and all of a sudden he started sinking. But when he had his eyes on Jesus, when he was focused on Jesus, he was not having any problem. And that's kind of how it is with life. You know, sometimes we're going to have some, some, some tough situations in life, 
And, and it's going to be real easy to kind of look at the situation and not like look at Jesus. But keep your eyes on him, and he will see you through. So one great way you can do that is to talk about him, okay? Talk about him with your family this week. That's our challenge. Spend some time uh, doing that this week. And we're going to spend some time, as we close out here, we're going to spend some time in Miniville with all of our friends, like Miss Amy, Ollie, you know, Miss Danielle, and they're, they're going to they're gonna come up now here in just a minute, so don't leave. Preschoolers, get ready. In about a minute, we're going to welcome them to the stage. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Kidsville, where we just kind of minister to those families and friends of our preschoolers. And we're back with Miss Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Hi. How are you? Good. Missed you last week. Hey, um, if you weren't with us last week, I want to tell you about a little game we started to play. Love this game. It's called I Spy. Have you ever played I Spy? 
Yes. Okay, we're going to try this. So here's an example of how to play I Spy. You start with somebody being the, the uh, spyer, the seeker, the it it person, okay? And you're the not it person. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Put your little binoculars up. Go like this, okay? And I'm going to say, I'm going to look for something, and then I'm going to give you a clue of what it is, okay? So put your binoculars up. I know it's kind of hard to do with a microphone. It's all right. I, you can do it. Yep. All right. All right. Okay, right? I spy with my little eye something orange, Danielle. Orange. Orange. What do you think? I don't know. It's orange. Orange. Hmm. Could it be orange Ollie? and white? Orange and white. Oh, what did you say? Ollie. Ollie. High five. Good job. Are we allowed to do that? Are we? Oh, oh. I don't know. All right. Anyway, I spy. Okay. So one person gives you kind of a clue, and the other person tries to find what it is. It's Ollie. He's orange and white. We love Ollie. Now. The reason why we're playing I Spy is we're talking about the Bible and how we can always see God and his son Jesus in the Bible. All right, Miss Amy, I don't understand because I can't see Jesus. I can see Ollie. I can't see Jesus. But here's the cool thing. Do you know people were alive back when Jesus was alive and he saw them and Jesus saw them and they wrote down all these awesome stories in the Bible. Hey, let's sing our Bible song. It's not in the script, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, ready? Let's sing our Bible song because you guys love this. Ready? Oh, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, Bible. It's the Bible. And there's all these stories in there about how God and Jesus worked in these people's lives, worked here on earth. He did some amazing things. So in these stories, these are written for a reason, okay? And here's what our memory verse says. It goes like this. Danielle, you can do this with me if you want, okay? It says, John chapter 20, verse 31. This is what it says. It says, and open your, your hands like this. It was like a Bible. These are written. What's written? Stories in the Bible, okay? These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of God. Guys, watch this video and come back and join us for a story. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. John 20, 31. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. John 20, 31. All right, so one of my favorite things at the library are these little books called I Spy Books, right? And it has this picture of all these different things, and it says, you need to find this, and you need to find that, okay? So last week, when we talked about when Jesus was born, okay, and he was real, and how he grew up, we saw things. That, let me see if we have a, a, that picture, that I Spy picture. Did you guys see that? Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so last week... We talked about all kinds of different things. We talked about an angel. Can you guys find that angel in the picture? You can point it. Don't touch your screen unless mommy and daddy say you can touch it. Some screens are sensitive. Don't break anything. Okay. We saw an angel. We saw sheep, little lambs. Remember we were in the nativity where, or the, the uh, manger, the stable where Jesus was born. There was animals there. And then we saw who? We saw baby Jesus. Baby Jesus was born, right? But did did Jesus stay as a baby? No. Jesus didn't stay as a baby. Jesus grew up, and he grew into, like, an adult, like Danielle and I, right? And, but he walked this earth, and he did things that nobody else could do and nobody else would ever do. And he did something super special that only he can do. And I'm going to tell you about that story today. You guys ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. So who are we talking about, Danielle? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so the first question I have before we do this is, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus, Danielle? Yes. Okay, because it's, it, I don't want you just to kind of revisit these stories of, I hear this every Christmas, 
I hear this, another holiday, maybe Easter, right? And I'll tell you what the story is. First, I want you to understand that God loves everybody. God loves us so much, Danielle, and our friends back home. God loves us so much, he sent his one and only son, Jesus, right? We talked about that last week. But then something else happened. He sent his one and only son to a cross for us. Now, that's hard to understand in our little brains. So we're going to break it down like this. What is the shape, when you think of love, what is the shape you think of? Daniel, audience participation. A heart. A heart. Okay, so I want everybody to look at our eye spy picture. Let's see our eye spy picture. Is it back up? Eye spy picture. Ta-da! Okay. See, now, I want you to look at our eye spy picture, and I want you to find the red heart. The red heart. Now, it looks like this. Can you guys find the red heart in our eye spy picture? I spy with my little eye. Yep, there it is. Red heart. Now, this red heart represents Jesus' love. Love. He loves everybody. Everybody. Now, before that, or after that, can't even get my things. Okay. Look for the yellow heart. Yellow heart. Danielle, can you hold my red heart? Thanks. All right. Look for the yellow heart. I'll give you a minute to look. I spy with my little eye a yellow heart. Did you find it? Did you get it? Yay! All right, yellow heart. Now, here's the, Danielle, look. Hold these together. Does this heart and this heart look the same? No. They're different. This is red. This is yellow. See, even the people that looked different, even the people that acted maybe different, Jesus still loved, right? Because Jesus loves everybody, everybody. So here, Danielle, you can hold the yellow heart. All right, ready? Another heart. I spy with my little eye the blue heart. Can you find the blue heart in our picture? Look for it. You found it. Okay, now, hold on. Look really, really close, really close. Is there something different about our blue heart versus our red heart and our yellow heart? Look close, look close. Guys, it's frowning. It has a sad face. Do you know why? Because even if somebody makes a mistake or makes a bad decision or does something really, 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 really wrong, Jesus loves them, even them, even them. Can you hold that? Thanks, Danielle. Okay, so back to our super story. So here's what happened. Jesus is God's love, right? Sent his son Jesus who loves everybody, not just the people that believe the same thing he did or followed him all the time, but loves everybody. Even the people that did bad things. And he did something amazing, especially, I mean, for all of these people, especially for you. See, here's what happened. The mean people took Jesus and they hurt him. They hurt him so bad that Jesus died. And Jesus, his friends took his body and put him in this maybe cave. Like there was like one way in and one way out. And they put this big rock. I brought a rock. Way bigger than this rock. Way, way bigger. They put this huge rock in front of this cave. And Jesus couldn't get out. But it's okay because he was dead. And that's super sad. But wait. Three days later, something happened. Do you guys know what happened? Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus was alive. He came back to life. He went through all that pain. He went through that separation. He went through death because he loves you. And he wants to be your best friend forever. Will you believe that? I hope you believe that. Guys, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. I hope you love him. Watch this Ollie video, come back, and we'll talk a little bit more. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. <gasps> Hello, friends. I'm Aisha, 
and welcome to my cupcake food truck. Do you want to see today's special? Ta-da! They're my whole lot of love cupcakes. I made them because today's story is about someone special who loves us so, so much. If you're ready for a story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three. Tell me a story. Today's amazing true story is about someone very special who did something only he can do. If you think you know who this very special person is, I want you to shout out his name. Yes, Jesus. Jesus is the very special person and I'm going to tell you about the most amazing thing he ever did that only he can do. God sent his son Jesus to show us how to love each other and to be our friend forever. Wait, where did the heart go? We might need to play I Spy to find it. Get out your pretend binoculars and let's look for it. Ready? Tell me when you see the heart. I spy with my little eye a heart. And look, it's showing us that Jesus taught us how to love others by being a good friend. Wait. Let's look for it. Ready? I spy with my little eye. The heart! Right there! Good job, everyone! And look, the heart is showing us that Jesus was a good friend to people who were different than him. <laughs> Not again! Where did it go now? Let's look for it. Ready? I spy with my little eye. The heart! <laughs> it's showing us that Jesus was a good friend to everyone, even people who made bad choices. Jesus was a friend to everyone. One day, a very sad thing happened. Some angry people took Jesus away and hurt him so bad that he died. Jesus' friends buried him in a tomb and rolled a big stone in front of it. Jesus was gone and his friends were very, very sad. On the third day, Jesus did something that only Jesus can do. Jesus came back! <laughs> Jesus is alive! Yes, Jesus is alive! Say that with me! Jesus is alive! One more time! <laughs> Jesus is alive! We know Jesus is alive because people saw him and talked with him. Then they wrote all about it so we can know and believe that Jesus is alive! Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, hey, Ollie. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. All right, guys, we're going to play one more I Spy game. You ready? I spy with my little eyes something gray and round and shaped like a circle. Look at our, look at our I Spy slide. See if you see it. See if you see it. Gray, round, circle. Do you see it? Right by Ollie. Looks like this. A round circle. Guys. I have this because it reminds me of that big stone that was rolled in front of the tomb, but it didn't stay there because what happened? What happened, Danielle? It rolled away. It rolled away, and Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive, and he wants to be your friend forever. This week's challenge is this. Find yourself a circle. I don't care what color it is. I want you to cut it out. I want you to put that on your refrigerator. And I want you to look at that. And every time you see it, you're reminded that Jesus is alive and he wants you to be his best friend forever, forever. All right, Danielle, you guys ready to pray? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give them a clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Fold them. Put them on your lap. Let's pray. God, thank you for all of our friends in Kidsville that are watching online and with their families. God, I thank you that you rolled the stone away, that you love 
everybody that you love me and Miss Amy and all of the kids watching and all of their moms and their dads. Um, I thank you so much that you rose from the grave. In your name, amen. Amen. Guys, we love you. We hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.